Ready? Yep. Okay. Welcome to the May 23rd Transient Guest Tax Committee meeting. Um, nope, not yet. Um, we'll um, check in. I'm Michelle Hofer. I'm from District 9. Marcus, you want to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Marcus Miller, District 6. And we don't know if Brett's going to make it or not, but we have the majority, so we can go ahead. Okay, so the first thing we have, Marcus, is approval of the minutes. So I, I move to approve. And I'll second it. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'll take care of those. Um, Josh, you want to go ahead and work, uh, talk about our quarter one reports? Yep, I'll have Taylor if she's, do you have the PowerPoint available? Uh, I do not, but I can give it. I can, I, can, I can verbally give it since I think all the members of the committee have it while Taylor's pulling that up. And plus you probably want to hear from uh, the actual organizations than me. You want me to email it to, it to you? Yeah. Give me one sec. Did you hear from Brett? He'll be here? Okay. Just send it your way on your Outlook. He is logging on now. Okay. Oh, there he is. Yeah, so basically um, what the PowerPoint encompasses is what the total timeline um, of the TGT sales tax or T, yeah, the TGT tax was for each organization, their total budget, what was dispersed Q1 2024. So for example, Constitution Hall uh, was distributed $6,932 in Q1 and then how much has been distributed to date versus their total budget. And I also put a short couple bullet points on what the organizations had in their uh, quarterly updates. Um, obviously, those are available in the full packet, but I just thought for people watching at home, provide a short bullet or two. And then I'll, obviously, I'll let the organization speak on their behalf. Um, but then getting down to the Evil Knievel portion, obviously, they're no longer here and they're no longer receiving the TGT tax. Um, in red on the last slide, it currently undistributed to date to them is 71000 $922. We're projecting that to be around $94,000 by the end of the year that would be undistributed because um, I think that was that was asked to provide to you guys. So I wanted to give you an idea of how much will be undistributed by the end of 2024 in this fund. Okay. And that's kind of all I have. I, for specifics on each organization, I, I have the subject matter experts who are here speak today, but unless you guys have any questions on specific financing, I'm here. Marcus or Brett, do you have any questions on how we're doing for the year? No questions. No, I'm good, thank you. Okay. Um, Joanne is here, so I'm gonna ask her, do you wanna give a quick update on how things are going with your construction? Oh, sure. Yeah, come on up. Okay. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. okay. Um, it's been an exciting month, and we are in the process of uh, contract negotiations with a local contractor. Uh, um, the construction on the Alley Foundation restoration will begin this summer. We will be waiting for construction at the other end of the alley to finish up, and then we'll start immediately after that and look forward to the you know, working with the city on that and the engineer teams there. It's it's a complicated project, but we're in good hands. And so we appreciate everybody's expertise. Um, we continue with interior design and that's all moving forward as well. And we have, in fact, just uh, today, the final deed was signed. So we've expanded our footprint and very excited about the additional spaces, which will be critical to um, 
HVAC infrastructure needs, earned revenue, um, and just creating a really positive patron, artist, and uh, visitor experience. Cool. That's great. Okay. Thanks. Um, who do we have online? Um, Sean, do you have anything, any report do you want to, quick one you want to give before we get into the undistributed funds? No, just briefly, um, you know, we, we celebrated Brown v. Board um, all last week and are continuing to celebrate that this week. Um, and Visit Topeka made a lot of investments in the exhibits and festivities that have been undergoing throughout this process. And of course, we can't do that without the transient guest tax and the support of the city of Topeka. So uh, I just want to thank you guys for your continued investment and support in what we're doing on behalf of you all for the community. And it's been very well received, with especially with the Brown Report 70th stuff this week. So thank you. Sure. I can't tell who else is online. Dustin Gale and Matt Martin. Okay. Um, I don't know what Dustin would tell you. Matt, do you have anything you want to report? Or are you good? I'm just here to be with you guys, and I just follow <laughs> Sean on these things. Okay. Just checking. Okay. So next on our agenda is the discussion about, yeah, I've got that, um, the undistributed funds. So at this point, we have a couple of options. One is to distribute it to the existing groups. But I have another option that I would like to present. Um, and I think our other groups are doing fine. They've got plenty going on. And that is the potential ice rink at Evergy Plaza. There's been discussions going on with different groups. And I guess I could, well, I'm not ready to make a motion yet. Um, I'll do that after we talk about it. But we would have about 100,000 by the end of the year that could go towards it. And potentially another 80, 90-ish thousand. Probably you're looking at anywhere from 80 to $90,000 for the remaining three years. So that would be a good chunk um, going towards that project. and. I'm going to have Kurt step up and speak to it. Uh, Brett, what's your question? I'll, I'll let Kurt go, then, I'll, then I was going to speak. Um, so that way I can hear uh, more from uh, Kurt's side of things. OK. <coughs> Marcus, do you have any questions? No questions. Um, I, I'd like to hear from him as well. Um, I'm not opposed to it. I'd just like to know a little bit. Um, if they have some culture dollars, I know we have uh, almost 100. I know we have, what would you say, Josh, we have 90? So currently there's $71,000 that's undispersed as of right now. We're projecting that to be $90,000 at the end of the year. But then also there's future funds that we would have paid Evil Knievel through t the end of 2027. So you're looking about $160,000, $170,000 in total. Okay. By the end, but um, in, uh, by the end of 2027. So, as of right. today, it's seventy-one thousand dollars. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah I, yeah, I just want to hear Kurt if we can. Okay, Kurt, you want to go ahead? Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Kurt Young. Uh, I'm wearing my Downtown Topeka Foundation hat this afternoon. Uh, first off, I want to thank this committee and the city council for all of the support that you've given to uh, the efforts to get the plaza built and where we are today uh, couldn't have happened without the, the uh, fine efforts of the city being behind the project. Uh, on behalf of the foundation, I'd like to present you today with a request to consider uh, for the disposition of all of the remaining transit guest tax dollars left from the Evil Knievel allocation. And I do this, I'm gonna go back uh, just almost 11 years in history, back to when we first 
began the discussions about setting aside this 1% that we're all uh, receiving now. And it was, uh, it was determined at that time, or the, the suggestion at that time, was to set this 1% aside for infrastructure development. And uh, to the council's credit, that's what they did. And the request I have for you today is, is still in line with that uh, original intent. As you know, the Evergy Plaza provided an ice rink uh, two years ago through the, the winter months of November, December, and January. Uh, it was, I will say, very successful in the, in the eyes of the community. And we had a lot more participation on the rink than we, uh, I think, in, some folks anticipated. However, from an economic standpoint, it was, uh, it lost money at an unsustainable level uh, for the foundation. Uh, but we did recognize out of that the, the need and the necessity to look at the possibility of, of continuing an effort to have ice. And it's through the last several months of studying this and looking at how we could accomplish that that we've determined that the, the best way to do this that will produce a rate, a rate of return to the foundation instead of losing money is to actually buy the equipment. And that's how our discussion started out several months ago, was basically looking at duplicating the setup that we had two years ago uh, on a more permanent basis but, or uh, I say on a, on a basis of owning the equipment. That discussion evolved into a uh, possibility of actually building a permanent ice rink in the grass on the north end of the plaza. And that's what I'm going to uh, discuss with you today or present to you today. We've got a contractor that's been working with multiple ice companies to uh, actually build a facility on the grass at the north end, as it, it would not, at least at this point, would, would be an oval track type ice rink, 14 feet wide and approximately 150 feet in length, which would take up most of that grass area, if not all of the grass area on the north end. It would still have a center area that could be continue to be grass, it could be turf. Uh, we haven't really decided that particular part of it yet at this point. So to accomplish this, and, and I will preface this with the fact or with the statement that these are not firm, hard numbers yet. It's not actually in the form of a quote. We met yesterday, late yesterday afternoon, uh, with the contractor to see just where we are on the numbers, but there's, these are, are good numbers to work with and plan around. Uh, in order to accomplish this and pay for the, uh, the construction of this permanent ice rink. We've identified three possibilities uh, or sources of funding that we'd like to tap into and be able to pay for the equipment in its entirety. Uh, the estimated cost at this point are 832,000 in, 832, uh, in costs. That would build the rink permanent. It would have all of the glycol lines installed. Everything would be stubbed out to the alley side of the plaza. Uh, the chillers would be mounted at the north end of the restroom building that is currently in on the, the east side of the alley. There would be three chillers uh, and everything would be put in place and from a, just from an upkeep standpoint, uh, contractors are telling us that this facility would require 
very little, since it's all basically concrete, very little maintenance over the next 10 to 15 years. So it would be something that would be there. It could be utilized every year. Um, the, the good thing, a, a couple of good things out of this, uh, you, you say, you, you know, it begs the question, what do you do with the, the, the rink in the summer, the spring, summer, and fall months? We're already brainstorming about things that could take place on that track, on that ice rink, during those warm months when there's not ice on it. And there's the, the list is just uh, real, uh, real long in terms of, uh, we've had things like radio controlled car races to, uh, have been suggested. Huh. Uh, there's just a, a host of things that could be done. So it could become, or we anticipate that it would become a year round portion uh, use for the, for the plaza. From a long term perspective, as I said, you're looking at 10 to 15 years with, of, of uh, no, I won't say no maintenance, but you're not looking, it's not something that's gonna have to be re installed and re you know, replaced every year, it's there. It will also, at the, at the based on the numbers from what we did two years ago, I believe we generated approximately $130,000 in revenue just from skate rentals. So using that going forward, uh, that's the number we have plugged in. I believe we've actually got $132,000 plugged in in skate rentals. That's a number that's going to generate sales tax revenue back to uh, the city. Uh, the uh, we are looking, we do have a potential sponsor that we've been having discussions with for the last two months. Uh, while we don't have a, a signed commitment at this point, uh, we do uh, have a, a strong feeling that we'll be able to reach an agreement with them. Uh, the second, that's one source of funding. Obviously, these transient guest tax dollars is a second source, and we also will be making application for some of the ARPA funding that is available, uh, it's my understanding. So with those three sources of funding, uh, we can, we're anticipating being able, being able to cover the full cost of the ice and have a, a uh, debt-free, um, platform to start on. So uh, I will stand for any questions at this point in time. We, again, we're asking that you consider allocating all of the remaining tr Evil Knievel Transit gas tax dollars to this effort. That's the number we have plugged into our uh, performer, into our budget. And uh, I do have some financial uh, numbers that I can that I can hand out that uh, do have the cost breakdown and what we anticipate on it. So I'll take any questions that you may have at this point. Brett, go ahead. All right, Kurt, what was the uh, width of that again? I heard the I heard the length was 150, but what what was the width? The the width. The track itself is 14 feet wide, and but the grass, that's an, an oval track with, with an, an open, a hollow, it's a donut. Okay. So, uh, so uh, it would basically be the width of the grass area down there on the north end of the plaza, Brett. So is there any way to make it a full length, like width-wise? Yes. Uh, because my, my thinking there is, we haven't had hockey in Topeka in a few years, but we still have plenty of families that travel for hockey. Uh, we have plenty of skaters. And my thinking there is, we could even, one another way to generate some money is to have a, instead of having a traditional um, hockey uh, 
ring size. It sounds like it's going to be about uh, uh, three quarters traditional size, but we could have some smaller, maybe like instead of having a six on six, we have a, a four on four league or something like that. Uh, the same with the adult time. We have plenty of adult league uh, hockey players that used to play here in town. That this could see, see I could see some more avenues when the ice is down to to keep things going. Uh, I remember, and it might have been you that said this, uh, uh, the kind of the flaw in the system before why I, why I lost money is because we were renting the, the equipment, not purchasing the equipment. Right. And that long-term purchase was was kind of the way to go to, to make this sustainable. And I know that, uh, you know, there's uh, Topeka Ice or some group like that that's out there. They've always kind of been trying to work with this to, to try to get this done, and I, and I I'm all for this. I, 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 I used to go to hockey games all the time here in town, and I know all the families that have the kids that, that play it. So this would be, to me, a great place if we could, instead of just having it be the oval, have it be a full size, would be more accommodating to a lot more people rather than just having kind of like the skate, um, like a, a roller rink kind of setup or a roller derby setup kind of thing uh, during the winter time. Yes, and, and you're absolutely right. We can do that, and we talked about it in our board meeting uh, yesterday morning, a foundation board meeting, about the possibility of going to a, to a full uh, rectangular traditional ice rink setup. Uh, the only thing that it would stand in the way of that right now as we speak is that's going to cost more than what we have proposed at this point. So we, we would need to go back and, and uh, either find more, well, we're just obviously going to have to find more funding. Yeah. I think maybe, uh, have, you, have you talked to the Topeka Ice people at all? I have a commitment to get a hold of those folks. I have not, I told, uh, told everybody at the board meeting yesterday I would get with them and visit with them. I did not have time to do that prior to this discussion today. Okay, because they might, they might be willing to, to pitch in on this also if it is a, a full, uh, full length, full width uh, style. And then we can always, just during the, uh, the uh, uh, ice skating aspect, yes. put down some fake turf and make it, a, make it an oval for the more the uh, track style uh, skating aspect of things and golf though, uh, where people got an area to sit and rest in the middle uh, kind of thing is what I like to, I'm all for this idea. I just more, more for the, the full length, full width yeah. style. And, and we're, we're certainly open and receptive to it. It's, Any other questions? Or do you want to give Marcus a shot? Well, Mark, yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Marcus can have the floor. Uh, thank you. I, uh, I was sitting pondering, especially while Brett was talking, there is a piece of me that would like to see it be more regulation, but you know, we're talking 14 feet, and that grass area is not nearly enough to make a a true size ice rink for for sports. Uh, but I don't think it necessarily has to. Uh, sure, that'd be great if we could have that, but it sounds like that would probably quadruple the cost. Um, so at this point, I, I don't know if I can support that, but I can support us if we believe that we can bring in about 130 some thousand a year in sales, I think that it makes sense if this is where the costs were allocated. Um, you know, I was kind of skittish on that on 100% on of it, uh, but if, if we're talking on the back end, and that's going to be a generator of, of tax money for our citizens, then, then, then I can support that. Okay. What steps do we need to take to get this going? And Josh, well, can we commit without we, a we need, full budget? Uh, if to move forward on either any plan, we need to know that we have the funding. So we're in the we're trying to proceed as expeditiously as possible 
to not only secure the, the transit guest tax funding, but we're going to start the process of, of applying for some, some ARPA funding. Um, the, the transient guest tax evil can evil fund is a fixed number. Okay, we pretty well know what that's going to be. So, um, and and we've got a number that we've been talking to a sponsor about. So, any flexibility that we have is going to either require another sponsor uh, or. A, a higher level of ARPA funding to fill the gap than okay. what we, the higher level than what we had anticipated. Uh, if we're going to, if the desire and the only way this is going to get done is to build a traditional slab, big uh, rink, full size rink down, down there. Uh, that will require some backing up on with the contractor in terms of getting more, uh, getting the, the quotes refined to cover that. Uh, I think Brett's right, it's going to be a significant amount of money. Um, where, we, where, the, where the oval, the donut oval came in and the 14 foot wide track, uh, that's what the, a lot of the contractors are saying communities are putting in. They're putting in track style ice rinks because um, in those cases, hockey is, has not really been a, a consideration. We by no means have said that, that hockey is not a consideration. We want to, we, I think we're willing to consider that. But it does present another another financial hurdle that is going to be a big hill to climb. Okay. Uh, I want I want to be clear. I am I'm thinking more on what you're wanting to do right now. I'm not wanting to go to where hockey has to be um, because the cost would be too much. There's not enough space necessarily for that right there anyway. So I'm saying we do need the track style. So I'm I'm in uh, I'm in line with you. Okay. I'm going to ask if you can ask the contractor if it's something that can be changed and the oval filled in at a later date. Okay. I don't know if that's feasible or not, but just so we have that, we know that. I'm going to take a, a, a shot in the dark here is that it, it will be it will cost more to do it later. Oh, I know. Because the glycol lines, that the refrigerant lines, follow the oval track. Okay. And so, if you're going to have, uh, I, you know, I'm sure it can be done, but uh, I quite honestly was, uh, I, I don't have any information on that at this point. Well, maybe it's possible with people getting excited about it, we might get a few more sponsors to step up. So yeah. w I think all we can do is make a oh, go ahead, Brett. I, I just think, uh, you know, we could also, besides just have the oval track, if we open it up to where, let's say it's three quarter size, but actual range, so it's smaller team on the ice side, that'll generate a lot more money for where we have the adult league that I know will, will show up. Uh, I've already had to talk to a few people that said, if they can get off adult league back here, they would, and that would just generate money right there from the league fees uh, to use the ice. Uh, you, you could even host, uh, you know, with, between the adult leagues, that can set up the, the precedent there to set it up for youth leagues to do the smaller, like I said, it, traditionally you have six on the ice at, uh, on each side at a time. With this being three quarters, you can do like four and four, or even with the little kids, you could keep it traditional, uh, but the size of the rink is, is much smaller where USA Hockey likes it for the little kids. But we, I, I pretty much, could almost guarantee that we would have um, 
money generated from, from hockey leagues, the youth and adults, uh, whatever format we decide to go with, that they would they would jump on board and that would generate more more money there to help to offset that extra cost uh, to to be on there. Uh, I don't know if, if we want to table this, have Kirk go back and come back with the two different numbers, the, the oval and the full, and see where we're at on that. Uh, I know, um, I know, like I said, I know it's going to cost a little bit more, but um, just like in hockey, there's sponsorships all over the sideboard, so uh, we could definitely generate more money there also by, we could have a naming rights for the rink, but we also could have just additional sponsors like they do at, at hockey rinks and ball fields and, and football stadiums uh, all the time. Well, just a suggestion, uh, this can all, I mean, all of this homework, we, we can look at that. Mm -hmm. I think the, the one thing that's before you is to, is to what to do with that leftover evil Knievel allocation. And if, if you could choose to make a decision on that today, then irrespective of which way it goes, then we'd have that particular uh, task taken care of and checked off the list. Well, I, I moved to approve the, the funds be uh, allocated to Energy Plaza for some type of uh, ice rink. I don't want to quite go that route. I'm going to see if I can do this. I wish we had our attorney here, but mm -hmm. it would help. I'm thinking more in terms of we commit the funds. Um, I don't think pursuant's the right word, but given a date that we have this all figured out by, say, the November, December, and if we can't get the money, if you can't get all the money together and get this all together, then um, the transient money would stick with us it's going to stay with us until you get everything sure. squared away but basically we're committing to do it but we need a timeline i don't want it to sit for a couple of years yeah. and it, it can't sit for i mean it we were we want to get it quite done. honestly we were on a timeline that was going to have ice there yet this year uh, I can't say whether that can happen as easily because I haven't talked to the to the contractor to find out how much more work this creates. But obviously, it does create a lot of work, a lot more work, so uh, probably a lot more design effort. So uh, I'm just trying to figure out a way to make sure that the money, if things just fall apart and we can't get it to work. I think I don't think that's going to happen. But the money comes back and then at such point we would reallocate it to something else. I want to make sure that we have the right way to do that. That's what I'm trying to figure out, the right way yeah. to word it and do it, and that's why I wish legal was here. Well, we could make it contingent on a certain date if things have not been worked out that the money then is returned to you know, and then by, the, let's say by, you know, the end of the year. I that okay. I was trying to think what the date was. Yeah, that 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 works with me. Yeah. And with the option to come back and reapply, if we can't get it done by yeah. the end of the year, and it goes into next year. Okay, that that works for me. Does that? I'm just I, trying I, to find know. best way to do it. Marcus, you're an attorney. <laughs> I want to state for the record that I do not have my jurisdiction. I am not an attorney. I am not an attorney. Well, uh, do you have any ideas then? I'm just trying to think of the best way to do this. I think the best way for us to do this, again, not an attorney, but if we can commit the money to them right now, then the 
rest of the money that is going towards for 2027. Once we have the ideas back that Brett and Michelle have requested, then we can allocate the rest of that money. But I'm perfectly fine with the rest of the money that's meant for 2024 to be dedicated to the plaza right now. And then with the final plans, we commit the rest of it. That's, that's fine. Although I don't think we need to do all of that because I don't think I, I don't think it's going to be very feasible to to put that together. But if we want to look at it, then I, I respect your, your wishes on that. Okay. How about if we just do a straightforward commitment to Evergy Plaza for the ice skate rink? Um, with the attorneys looking at it, um, the city legal office, make sure that we do this correctly. How about, how about just give it to us, just allocate it to us, and if we can't produce an ice rink, we give it back and put some kind of a future date on that, whether it's the end of the year. I think it's important for us to know that we have our arms around that money. It helps us when we go to find, to talk, sit down with the sponsors. Uh, it helps us when we apply for the ARP uh, money. I think we need to know that we have that funding secured. Would that money stay with the city until they needed it? That money wouldn't, yeah, it depends on how the contracts are in, since this would be over $50,000, it would have to go to governing body approval, which Amanda will be there and can give more insight on the legal background than myself. But a lot of this information could be hashed out at a council meeting and Kurt can come, here, come there and present and items like that, but it wouldn't be dispersed till the governing body approved right. it and also a contract was written, sure. et cetera. So just because you approve this today doesn't mean they get the money today. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Sean, oh, sorry. go ahead. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize I was unmuted. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I, I believe this would end up being a committee recommendation that would have to go to the governing body anyway. So exactly. A bit of well, I know it yeah. does. Yeah. But I just want to make sure we have the right recommendation that we send to council. So, okay, I'll go back to who made the original. Uh, okay, Brett. So, well, I, uh, I, I say I move to approve uh, the funding for the uh, ice rink um, contingent on the everything being done by the end of the year, or all the uh, paperwork being done by the end of the year to get it uh, started. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Do I have a second? I, I want to make sure what I'm seconding here. It, is the motion to put forth the money from 2024 pending the the fix that you're asking for, or we're allocating that and then they can then do the paperwork or do the the plans, yeah. or because I want to make sure what I'm going to second here. Okay, we would. Put all the money towards Evergy Plaza and the ice rink from all, now all through 2024. 2024 through 2027, the whole distribution. But it's pending um, approval of the contract and all by the legal department. I think you okay. just say by pending a development contract. Correct. Yeah. Because that's what we built the plaza under was a, a contract that we negotiated with the city. So uh, I think that pretty well ties it down. And, and I'm comfortable with that for the simple fact that it's going to go through the governing body. It'll have time for, for any, any people who want to come and speak on it also. And then, uh, you know, hopefully we may, you know, maybe have more lockdown on on pricing between the two options possibly. There you go. Does that work, Marcus? That's fine, I second it. Okay, so all in favor, say aye. 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 
Aye. Aye. Liz has got that. Okay. Uh, any other items before the committee that you know of? Seeing none, um, I believe we're ready to adjourn. Right, have a good day. Thank you. We're done, Taylor.